good morning students today we are going to have our third today we are going to have our fourth lecture from the chapter plant life okay in this uh, video in this lecture we are going to study the process of pollination and i hope so you must have revised the previous video that is the third lecture on flower because without knowing without revising the structure of flower you will not able to understand the process pollination okay so we will start with the process pollination so first of all what is a pollination pollination is a process in which there is the transfer of pollen grains from the anthers of a flower to the stigma of the flower okay in simple terms what is a pollination pollination is a process in which the pollen grains are getting transferred from one flower from the anther of a flower to the stigma of the flower they are getting uh, they are moving from the anthers and reaching where they are reaching towards the stigma of the flower okay now over here you must know that pollination is of two type okay self pollination and the cross pollination it depends upon where the pollination is taking place if the pollination or the transfer of the pollen grain is in between is in the same flower the transfer is taking place from the anther to the stigma in the same flower or the different flower but of the same plant then it is called as a self pollination and if the pollination is taking place or the transfer of the pollen grain is taking place from one flower of one plant to the different flower of the different plant but of the same species then it is called as a then it is called as a cross pollination okay so it must be clear to you that pollination is a transfer of the pollen grain from the anther to the stigma of the flower if this transfer takes place within same flower or the different flower but of the same plant then it is called as self pollination and if this transfer is taking place from one flower of one plant to the different flower of the different plant but of the same species then it is called as a cross pollination okay then our next slide see this is just the revision i have arranged this slide for you just to revise this thing okay uh, in the previous video we have studied this thing the parts of the flower uh, the pedicel that is the flower stalk then the receptacle on which all the four floral whorls are born four floral whorls are the sepals that is a green colored sepals then the brightly colored petals sepals are they are the calyx then petals that is a corolla then anther and the filament makes up the stamen that is the male reproductive part or the androecium then stigma style and ovary makes up the carpel or the pistil which is the female reproductive part or the gynoecium okay so outermost whorl is the sepal that is green color and innermost whorl is the pistil or the carpel and inside the ovary you must you can see that ovules are present these ovules will further in further videos we will study that they will be converted into the uh, this is this whole ovary is converted into the fruit and ovules are the seed okay now next slide what is the difference between the self pollination and cross pollination this is again just the revision what we have studied in the previous two slides self pollination is a transfer of pollen grain from the anther of a flower to the stigma of either the same or means genetically similar plant means of the same species okay while cross pollination is a transfer of the pollen grains from the anther of a flower on one plant to the stigma of a flower on another plant but of the same species okay now how these pollen grains are getting transferred how they are transferred from one flower to the another flower or if they are trans okay so uh, it depends upon the uh, agents of pollination this transfer takes place with the help of some agents okay pollen grains from 
uh, another anther is transferred onto the stigma of the recipient flower by any one of these pollinating agents okay in which the very very common agent is the water wind animal and the insect these are some common one okay some common agents through which the pollen grains are carried from one flower to the another flower wind water animal and insects now this is also just a revision of this thing uh, pollinators uh, how why why the insect will visit the flower okay so pollinators means that agent gather nectar for food as pollinators move from one flower to another to gather more nectar the pollen grains on the pollinators body get transferred to the stigma of the recipient flower for example bees see this you can easily understand in this slide this is a very very self explanatory slide in which a cross pollination process is shown okay so the bees are visiting the flower for what to gather the nectar for food okay then while they are sitting in the on the flower the pollen grains get stick to their legs then when they visit the another flower when the bee travels to another plant of the same type remember same type same species then the pollen on the bee sticks to the pistil of a flower that means stigma of a flower on the another plant so how this is just the process this is just a simple diagram this is a process how the pollen grains are tra transferred from one flower to the another flower this is the example of how the bees are carrying the pollen grain okay now depending upon the pollinators the agents we have certain categories okay certain categories or the groups of the cross pollination in this first one is the pollinator or the agent is the wind so the pollination through the wind is also called as the anemophily anemos means wind and philly means that love okay uh, to like something so anemos philly me anemophily means the pollination that is taking place through the wind when wind is the agent of pollination then that pollination is called as the anemophily okay so in this in this uh, in in this flower in such kind of flowers in which the anemophily is taking place the anthers hang outside okay anthers hang outside the mass of light pollen grains are easily carried away by the wind these pollen grains can be trapped by the feathery stigma of another flower thus completing the pollination okay so and uh, some chief characteristics are also given over here in this slide you can read it out the flower the chief characteristic features of the flowers that are showing the anemophily the flower must be colorless odorless and nectarless means no color <coughs> then odorless no scent no nectar nothing pollen grains should be light because then only they are they will be transferred small and winged or dusty dry smooth non sticky and unwettable so the pollen grains are light small and winged <coughs> or dusty dry smooth non sticky these all are the characteristic of the pollen grains for Yeah, which will help them in the anemophily. Okay, then stigma is hairy, feathery, or branched to catch the wind-borne pollen grains. Pollen grains are produced in a large quantities. Can you please tell why this happens? Since much of it is blown away and get wasted away, that is why the pollen grains are produced in very large number. Okay, see uh, this slide. in which it has shown some process of the wind pollination okay then hydrophily hydrophily is a pollination is the name of the pollination in which the pollination takes place with the help of the water that means agency the agent is the water 
and hydro you all know that hydro means water so it is a mode of pollination or transfer of pollen grains through the agency of water very good very good example of this is the valesne area flowers are very small the chief characteristic feature of the flower having this hydrophily showing the hydrophily flower should be small inconspicuous nectar and odor all are absent pollen grains are very light and unwettable due to the presence of the covering mucil mucus covering okay then stigma is long sticky but unwettable okay see now see this slide this diagram you can omit this thing epihydrophily hydrophily this is not in your course but uh, as i have got only this slide for you see this one this diagram in which it is uh, uh, the on your uh, this thing uh, on your right hand side the diagram showing shown on the right hand side see this one that purple color diagram the pollination in valesneria is shown as it is in your course also so we will have just uh, this thing i will tell you how does it take place <clears throat> In Valesneria, the pollination is brought about by the contact of male flowers that are floating on the water surface with the female flower. Now, see the male flower. You can easily see in this slide in the diagram that male flower that they are, they are submerged in the water. Okay, and then they mature earlier and get detached from the parent plant and float on the surface of water. female flower as you can see the female flower is born on the different plant the female flower rises up to the water surface with the help of its straight long stalk which is earlier highly coiled when the male flowers are carried by the water current towards the female flower pollen grains are transferred from uh, pollen grains are transferred towards the stick okay now last one is your entomophily entomophily means in which the pollen grains are transferred from a flower uh, through the agency of insects so can you name some insects which help in this thing yes bees beetles butterfly butterfly is a very very common example okay so <clears throat> when the insect sits in the pet sits on the petals of a flower the mature pollen grains get dusted on its body and when this insect visits another flower the pollen grains are transferred to the stigma of that flower the chief characteristic features of this flower is you can easily tell that the flower must be showy beautiful brightly colored only then it is going to attract the insect only then the insect the bees butterflies will come for their nectar okay so and most insect pollinator flowers have a landing platform that means they should be large enough pollen grains are spiny heavy and surrounded by a yellow oily sticky substance called pollen grain this is very example because most of the students ask ma'am how does this pollen stick on their leaf so now this is, there is an answer because of the presence of a some substance called pollen kit okay stigmas are often inserted and sticky some flowers provide safe place to insects for laying eggs also this is just a advantage for some insect now <clears throat> this one ornithophily in which the mode of the pollination that is the agent of the pollination is the bird okay so what are the, uh, only few types of birds are specialized for such kind of pollination which has a small size and long beaks okay <clears throat> the chief characteristic feature of such flowers in which the birds are get coming for the pollination is that it should be brightly colored red orange yellow blue whatever flower parts are commonly leathery and ornithophilus flowers secretes abundant watery nectar or have edible parts scent is often absent okay so now this is your uh, end of this so now this is the end of your uh, lecture uh, that is uh, we have done now we have completed the portion pollination 
and i hope you all must revise this thing so that whenever we will meet next time we will start with the process of fertilization okay that is a little bit difficult and means an important also so but you all must revise whatever we are studying okay these days okay be at home stay at home stay safe